What's going on there folks? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this Thursday, August 18th, 2022 date. It is about 2.25 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the globe shows a 1.1 here along the west coast in California. Uh, also some activity ramping up here on the globe overnight and still continuing down here off the coast of uh, Costa Rica. It looks like a little activity on the globe. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map. Uh, showing the movement there along the west coast. Uh, looks like a pretty busy day up and down the board. Start over here around the Pyramid Lake region of Nevada. Seen some activity ramping up uh, within this region and also across the eastern sections of the Sierra Nevada here. Little bit of swarming going on around the Long Valley Super Volcano. Nothing spectacular, just a couple smaller earthquakes uh, on the board. In fact, 2.5 map and above only shows uh, well, one earthquake from yesterday, and it looks like another one from late last night off the coast of the um, Southern California region. So most of the activity we're seeing today on the microquake or on the microquake size level, but still somewhat active uh, throughout the last 24 hours, and including a little cluster here along the San Andreas Fault creeping section there um, along the coast range. Uh, further south, a little activity around the Rancho Cucamonga region in the last hour at 1.2. And as you can see there on the map, clusters across the board here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. No major swarmings have picked up around, uh, major swarming I should say, around the Salton Sea yet. Uh, we did see a little small earthquake activity along the Imperial Fault and just off the Brawley Seismic Zone following that uh, little earthquake there off the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault, the 2.9 uh, that kicked up there yesterday. All right, what else we got here for the west, or at least the western portion of the states, up around Washington, some small microquake activity around the Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens area. No major activity to report in that region. Somewhat active around Cedar, Utah today, it looks like. A couple small earthquakes in that region. Also some activity into Texas the 2.1 activity stretching across Oklahoma as well. One little earthquake around the New Madrid zone, a 1.9 near the uh, Wrigley, Tennessee area. And looks like over there in South Carolina, I believe this one here looks like overnight at 2.1, uh, just outside of the Homeland Park, South Carolina region. A little small microquake activity there today. All right, Puerto Rico, not uh, anything spectacular going on. Only 16 earthquakes in the mix here. Not a big deal. Uh, we did have one up around the Puerto Rico Trench. That one uh, coming in last night, uh, 3.8 at 50 kilometers, somewhat deep there into that section of the Puerto Rico Trench uh, down into the South America region. A couple small earthquakes, uh, including a 5.3. That one came in last night. Looks like we did have a little bit of further activity this morning, uh, further up onto the uh, northern section of Chile uh, with a 4.2 at 88 kilometers there. All right, uh, into Alaska, things uh, pretty active, and I'm, I'm sure they've seen some auroras last night up there. Wasn't quite as spectacular as uh, they were kind of forecasting, but we'll look at that here in just a little bit. Uh, movement throughout the Cook Inlet area and up around the Denali region. No major swarms or major activity to note around the Aleutian Trench and over here along the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Things look pretty quiet right now. Uh, the majority of this activity from early, 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 early this morning uh, or late night, however you want to look at it, uh, mostly confined here off the coast of Japan uh, and the northern, kind of like the northern section here of the Philippine Plate. Again, this activity, older movement. As uh, far as new activity goes here within the region, um, we did have a 5. Point, uh, yeah, 5.0 southeast of the Loyalty Islands region. Pretty much about the latest quake here within this region here of the Pacific Plate. That one's striking at 129 kilometers. Pretty quiet along the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench for now. Uh, and not a whole lot of noteworthy activity here further west throughout the Mediterranean region or the Atlantic. Uh, Big Island, Hawaii uh, looks somewhat active today. We've got about, well, 13 earthquakes. Most of the activity kind of in a, a little stretch across the coast here offshore. Uh, headed towards the Loihi Seamount, uh, but uh, overall nothing even showing up in the last hour, Six, uh, 13 earthquakes or so within this region today. 
uh, Yellowstone National Park. Go ahead and double check this map here. See if we got anything cooking off, cooking off or kicking off. However you want to look at it. Um, not a whole lot going on here uh, across this map. Looks like maybe there was some activity over here around the eastern section of the park. Although this activity looks even uh, distant from this seismograph station here. It is showing up across a couple of these graphs here along the eastern section. And it uh, looks like it may have picked it up down here along the Flag Ranch area as well. But no major uh, swarming to take note of here at the Yellowstone area. All right, space weather. Of course, we did reach G2 levels yesterday, about late afternoon, early evening time frame here. Uh, for the Aurora's KP index of the 6, indicating G2 class storming conditions. Since then, we've seen a little decline and then a little bit of uptick here around the uh, KP index of 5, which is a G1 class storm. That one uh, kicking off overnight and this, well, actually this morning time frame and currently sitting at about uh, KP index of 4. This should continue here over the next few days as we get a little series of some CMEs and uh, some activity from some coronal hole um, activity that was on the sun here. Got a couple different coronal holes. This one here is the area that's providing us with some of the uh, solar wind stream that we're seeing uh, over the last 24 hours. There is some activity as well. Uh, it's kind of facing the earth. This one here kind of looks like it was a, a little bit older image so I'm sure we're a little bit past that time frame, but uh, get the picture of where the coronal holes are. And um, some of those sunspots that did spark off some M flares uh, over the last couple days is also gonna give us a little bit of uh, some glancing blows from some weak CMEs, but that should keep us somewhat elevated here on the three day geomagnetic forecast, which kind of shows that continuing here uh, over the next couple days. Again, here's the Aurora forecast. Not uh, not a huge jump right now, but uh, again, we could be getting these little glancing blows from the uh, um, flare activity that we've seen over the last couple days. Uh, speed is still currently elevated above the 500 km range. And uh, so still, like I said, we're still kind of in that area where we could see this go on and off for a little bit. Uh, pretty stable on the interplanetary magnetic field right now. Uh, sunspot activity looking uh, like we got still about 99% chance of a sea flare. Looking at the solar flare chart shows us uh, still within that range. There's a couple small M flares as you can see reaching up into the category uh, overnight and this morning time frame it looks like. So uh, the sunspots are still quite active. I'm pretty certain that I know which ones it is. 3078 here. Um, got a lot of intermixing of the polarities there indicating that uh, complex magnetic class that it sees right now, 3078, I'm sure still has the uh, most likelihood of any events uh, as it holds a beta gamma delta class uh, for the magnetic field class. 80% chance for a C flare. There's, there is a 5% chance for an X flare. And a lot of times when we see this crackling and popping with a bunch of C's and, and some occasional M's, which it's put out, it does tend to squeeze in an X flare. Uh, on occasion, so we'll keep an eye on that uh, uh, on that type of class there throughout the day today and tonight. It is starting to uh, yeah, it's starting to fade away from us a little bit, but it is still within view. If we get any type of uh, major flaring going on, we could see a, a um, um, stronger radio emission blackout uh, for the high frequencies there on the uh, map. 3081 is facing us, but it doesn't have a complex type of magnetic field. 3082 looks like it may be trying to get some stuff together, um, but it looks like we do have a couple several a uh, couple different sunspots that are trying to develop here around the southeastern limb, and of course we'll keep an eye on that as the uh, days progress. But for now, a little bit of off and on solar weather activity there from those uh, the coronal holes and also the C CMEs that's been somewhat directed towards us. But uh, we never did reach that G3 uh, category, uh, which would be up there around the KP index of seven. Uh, so I'm not for certain how far south the uh, auroras were viewed last night. Of course, up into Canada and whatnot, possibly into some of the northern tier states, um, seeing that um, the auroras overhead. But 
yeah we'll see uh see if we get a g3 storm here in the future a real good one would be nice for sure all right guys let's see what else we got i want to check out the fire map see if we got any new fires started from the uh uh lightning events that we had yesterday and overnight uh, looks oh man it does look a little bit more active here uh looks like we got is that a new one outside of the reading area up 299 outside of whiskey town this area did see a big fire um a couple years back now the uh, i think it was called the car fire up here where they had that massive fire tornado uh it kind of i think it was an ef3 that came through here as far as the wind equivalent speed goes but uh, I'm surprised there's stuff to burn up there looks like that was reported uh, earlier this morning around noontime 34 acres burning in this area and uh, I'm pretty certain this was uh, let's see how this was started here looks like they're getting a handle on it with some aerial attacks uh, cause of the fire was a commercial vehicle involved in an accident with an SUV. So it looks like that was a, um, a car fire or vehicle fire for certain. Uh, but I do know we had quite a bit of lightning up here. And um, one acre, two acres, one acre. A couple, like I say, it looks a little bit more active. This is some older uh, fires that's been burning for a while, but uh, man. Well, I mean, that's kind of good to see that there hasn't been any major new starts uh, for the lightning events that we had yesterday, but uh, that's that's a good deal. Definitely a good deal. Alrighty, guys, have a good day. Stay safe out there, and of course, uh, you know, keep you guys updated on whatnot. Uh, if anything changes on the uh, earthquake globe, Hawaii here having a little issue with their seismograph station that's been giving some odd waves and and i think they're doing some type of adjustment on it right now so we'll watch that see if um if it gets back to normal if not i'll find a different seismograph station to monitor the uh, earthquake activity there at hawaii uh, but for now i will keep these stations up and uh, no doubt keep an eye on them have a good day folks stay safe out there and we will chat at you guys a little bit later tonight with the uh, thursday night update have a good one, folks, and uh, make sure you stay safe out there and be prepared.